people at the Pleasance Theatre in Edinburgh came to see my show in London, and Madame Jojo's, and they said, you really must bring this to Edinburgh. It's such a right show for Edinburgh. I don't know what a right show for Edinburgh is, so hopefully they're right. Um, it's, a, it's a musical journey, and I've got, you can probably tell by this interview, but I've got a terrible concentration level and terrible, I just get so bored so easily. So hopefully this shows for people like me who get bored very easily and can't concentrate. So hopefully um, it keeps, you know, it's like a roller coaster. You're feeling one thing one minute and then it, and then it gets very dark, then it's light and crazy and then it's out into the audience and, you know, the whole thing is a party atmosphere. You know, it's great to do a theatre piece in amongst the people, you know, in a party area rather than, you know, in a theatre where I'm far back and you're over there. I think enjoying yourself, you know, enjoying yourself and being creative. And, um, well, I think, I think I'm quite different. I don't just do what everyone else does and think, I, I make it difficult for myself in a way to get employed in certain things. I'm, I've got a much more husky, jazzy sort of voice. It doesn't suit a lot of musical theatre. Um, but because I am me, I am unique, um, you know, I think, you know, what I do do is, hopefully, I, keep, I try to keep it very interesting. And maybe that's what sort of kept things going for me. I performed in Matilde, um, I played Matilde in Matilde, it was just four performances, so I didn't really get the whole benefit of doing the whole Fringe, but I, that was my first experience in Edinburgh um, for the Fringe Festival. And I knew then I'd love to come up and do a show, because the atmosphere and the buzz is just so amazing. But um, I didn't really realise this was, you know, I had a show in the back of my brain that I wanted to do, but I didn't necessarily then think of it as being something for Edinburgh. So it just sort of happened, and then of course, because I had been there and loved it, it was great. I mean, Clark Peters is a good friend of mine and we work together, so I'm definitely going to go and see him, for sure. Peter Straker also is on before me. So actually, that's a really good thing. You can see Peter Straker, then they actually serve dinner in my venue, and then I'm on after dinner, so that's a perfect little trip. Um, and there's, there's some great acts. There's, um, I like quite a lot of the variety, sort of circusy type acts. I have Julian MacDonald, and it's utterly amazing. He's, um, he's having, I'm having a dress made with him right now. It's so exciting. I'm, I go, I'm, this is the shallow part of my show. Um, so yeah, Julian MacDonald, I'm going along having fittings. He's making it for me, which is so lovely. And um, I've got Frost French designs. I've got Lee Clavin corsets. I have uh, lots of sexy sort of underwear and sort of type things, La Perla. Um, and made by Nikki. I don't know if you know that make. It's a really cool make that I found on the internet. I was doing Lane Mears and everything before my mum's school got quite famous, um, and that's completely separate from me. It's not even you know a thing that's. It's not even. I didn't even mention it. It's not even caused by me at all. She's just an amazing woman. My mum. She's, you know, she's just brilliant. And um, Eliza. Obviously, Eliza's around, you know, a lot of people working in the industry, and her dad's a director as well. So she's been around music and theatre and performing, performance and everything anyway. So it's, it was bound to rub off in some ways, although she's generally, you know, completely different. She's a singer-songwriter, and she didn't go to... She wasn't allowed to go to my mum's full-time school because we felt it was too much around her. She went on Saturdays only. When I was originally working, um, when I first got all the amazing offers that came in when I was very young, I was um, constantly, um, you know, I was doing eight shows a week, doing records, doing so, so many things that, um, that I, I didn't have time to go out and party or, you know, I wasn't really a teenager or, young, or in my twenties I wasn't being, you know, young. I was simply working, disciplined to my work and that, you know, I think that's really important. Well, the beginning of the career is having a tough time. I mean, I was horribly lucky I didn't have that. But I have had it up and down. That was a dog. 
Um, I have it. I have it up and down. You know, there's. You know, my career may look like it's amazing, but on, honestly, there's there's lows and there's highs, and I really. I, I just think if you're really, if you really feel that you're good and you're really passionate, then keep going. And um, it's really, really hard. This industry is so hard. It can get so depressing, you know, when things aren't going well. And I kind of don't wish that on anyone. <laughs> well, this year has been such such a wonderful year for me doing my album and everything. And um, just well. If I could have my way, I'd just be continuing doing what I love and choosing my own material and doing my own shows. That's, this is what I'm, I get the buzz from.